everywhere in the world, emotional labor is very much what people in service organizations are expected to perform. And if they're not upbeat, then the managers are going to feel obliged to intervene. More and more companies are emphasizing service and service with a smile. And so, and, and emotion labor, what's called emotional labor. So you come to work increasingly to, um, to work with other people or to interview people in ways that involve you being upbeat and leaving a good impression. And that's, in some cases, mainly what you are doing. And, and a lot of people around the world are engaged in that kind of work. Um, you can think of air, air stewardesses or air, people on airplanes and so on, people in restaurants, uh, all kinds of service industries. I was surprised that there was such a discrepancy between the way that managers and the way that um, in, the, the people they were helping perceived the help itself because the managers thought they were being, uh, they self-described themselves as being instrumental. They were just doing it for the sake of the company or the sake of their careers, because they, they thought it was a good thing. Um, but they saw it as altruistic in the sense that it wasn't part of their job, whereas the, uh, the employees very much saw these managers as just going about their, their work, as they should do, helping solve problems. And so there was a, a discrepancy there. So that was surprising. And um, following from that, there was a surprise that the managers expected something back. They expected the people they helped to be committed to them personally, not necessarily the company, but them personally, whereas the employees resisted that. And uh, they didn't see any obligation to help the managers personally. There is prior research that suggests people who work in open plan offices are, are more stressed. Um, you, you have less privacy, you know, you're on display. And so if you have a, a private office to retreat to, where you can sulk in private, as it were, you're not going to have people, you're not going to have the manager saying, what's the matter, you know, um, let's go for a cup of coffee or tea and uh, sort you out. You can, you can hide away. These people couldn't hide, and so that puts them under stress. At the same time, it does allow them to engage with each other and, and give each other social support. Because we're looking at managers and employee interactions, but of course there are peer-to-peer -peer interactions as well. The managers saw themselves as going beyond the bounds of their work roles. And they seemed to have a rather narrow interpretation of what their jobs were. And that those jobs did not include intervening to help subordinates or anyone else solve their emotional problems, uh, whether they were asked or whether they intervened. So they thought they were being good guys, uh, but that they recognized that this was going to help them and help the company, but they didn't. They didn't see it as part of their work role at all. And that's, that was a major surprise. A surprising number of the conversations we had with them revealed that they expected personal commitment from their guys to help them, not the company, but personal commitment to them. And that's where they were liable to be disappointed. And, they, and so um, they didn't expect the employees to help them with their emotional problems, and nor did the employees see that as an option because there is a hierarchical barrier and these people were the boss, bosses and, you know, you don't help your boss with private emotional problems. So that, um, that option was not open. So the expectation from the managers was, well, they'll be repaid in some other more private way. And that's where it starts getting a little uh, worrying, but it doesn't take too much of a stretch of the imagination <clears throat> to see patterns of dependency arising and uh, people playing at amateur therapists and so on, and that could lead to problems in the long run. These patterns of behavior haven't been explored before. We know that emotional labor is uh, increasingly what people are expected to engage in in the workplace. But the specific downsides of that with respect to manager-subordinate relationships have not been explored. And, and so that's a topic that I and others, I think, will be looking at.